Welcome to the kitchen. Hey. Thanks for having us. <laughs> and it feels like kind of a sports family reunion. It is. Yes. Oh, man. He's That's my sister's right here. Literally. Oh. Big yeah. brother. Do. <laughs> well, I wanted to ask all of you what it feels like to be the only brown face in the room. I think we've probably all had that feeling, right? I've interviewed Bubba Wallace. I've interviewed Tiger Woods. And uh, Serena Williams recently talked about Meghan Markle and her experience of being the only in a royal family. What's been your experience? When you're the only a uh, black woman in the room when you're the only African-American person in the room. It's just part of your experience. In my early days of doing football, I would feel that they're not looking at me. Mm. Mm. They're not looking at me in the room. So you just have to keep climbing and, and stay true. But you also know that you can't mess up. If you're the only one, you're representing everyone who looks like you. Does it feel more like um, a burden or a privilege? Is it a burden? You could look at it that way, but it also is a privilege to be paving the way and inspiring uh, people behind you. And you said you were looking up to her. Absolutely. Of course, I was looking up to you, Lisa. <laughs> um, you know, when, when you're a black girl and you want to be a sports broadcaster, I mean, there are very few names that come to mind. And you guys were doing exactly what I wanted to do. But I remember how difficult it was when I first started college football. And you walk into these production meetings, and you're sitting there with the head coach. You're sitting there with your play-by-play -play and your analyst. And usually, these are all white men. And I always just felt like I didn't belong in the room. Wow. And and you're in those rooms for a reason. Your voice matters, your opinion matters, and it's, it's a privilege, like you said, but I also feel like it's a duty. What do you think, Mark? You know how I think more of us get into the room? There needs to be more of the people we see over, uh, in, uh, I guess they're not in the kitchen, they're in the living room. <laughs> <laughs> the people behind the scenes who bring us in. Mm -hmm. I remember going to this uh, sports editor's convention and. 90% of the sports editors were white and them saying that they didn't know how to find black sports mm. writers, mm. sports journalists. I'm like, what do you mean? They're just calling their, their friends and getting references. Yeah. But it's the sports editors, the producers, the station managers. Mm -hmm. Ultimately, I think those are the ones going to change how everything looks. If we get more decision makers in the room, then some of the conversations that we have sound a little different. My whole time coming up, I, I think I worked for one black sports editor. I don't think I have ever had uh, a boss of color. Really? It, not at ESPN. Yeah. Not covering college football, not covering the NBA, not covering the NFL. Never. Wow. How long? 20 years? 21 years. Every decision about your career is made when you're not in the room. Mm -hmm. And so the representation matters yeah. to help someone else get into the room with you. Oh, absolutely. I have another question in the kitchen. Um, when is the moment that you knew you were black? I was in second grade. My family had moved uh, from the inner city of Philadelphia to uh, a suburb of Philadelphia. And we were in a predominantly uh, white community. We had a, a play, and I was cast as the lead. And uh, I just thought it was the greatest thing in the world. Uh, but some of those parents, they did not. They complained to the school. Many parents didn't think that this little black girl should have the lead uh, in, in the class play. I just remember my parents telling me how proud of me that they were. They were fueled like. That's our kid. Like, that's, that's right. That's our kid who's the lead in, in the play. That's key, your parents' reaction to it. Because when yeah. you're little, you're just kind of like, What's something's wrong. On? You know, I don't really quite know what it is, yeah. but I can tell something's up because your parents are so fired up. Yeah. yeah. Um, so that was my moment. Mark, when was the moment? Around third or fourth grade. It was one night I had a friend, a kid that was an Asian kid, and he invited me over to stay the night at his house. Stayed the night, had a good time, got up in the morning, my dad picked me up. As Soon as we walked into the house, his mother had called. Dad picked up the phone and she said, yeah, uh, your son, he stole $20 out of my purse. She, so my dad said, hold on a second. He said, son, did you steal $20 from your friend's mom? I said, no. I'm gonna ask you one more time. Did you steal mm -hmm. $20 from your friend's mom? No. My dad gets, picks the phone up, my son doesn't lie to me. Mm -hmm. He didn't steal $20. I don't know what happened. I'm sorry about that. 
Ten minutes later, she called back, Mr. Spears, my apology. Uh, I found the $20 in my couch. And so he hangs up the phone. He took me aside. And, um, mm -hmm. He says, son, they thought you took the money because you're black. You know, seeing the pain on my dad's face, the anger. Yeah. That's when it hit. Angry and the fear that yeah. their child could be accused of something when they're not guilty of it. Yeah. Maria. I remember me and my family, we'd always take road trips. So we'd be, drive down from Chicago to Atlanta. And so, you know, we'd get down to the south. And it was kind of, it shifted. So we go into this restaurant and they have a ton of toys that are in there. And so I'm playing, because there's a lot of kids in the restaurant playing with toys. And there's a lady who works there that's walking around. She's like, you guys need to put those down. And I'm like five years old, my brother's nine. And I just keep playing. And my brother grabs me, he's like, okay, come on. And he was like, Listen, she came over there because you're black and you can't play like everybody else. Mm. And I, I mean, it takes a little bit of time for it to set in, but I knew that like me not being able to play had something to do with me being black and just kind of like sitting with that. That's heavy for little ones because mm -hmm. all of your experiences were when you were small. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Ain't that horrible? Right? Yeah. <laughs> it's oh my God. not that unusual. I know. Yeah. Thank you for joining me in the kitchen. Thank you. Thank you. It's my privilege. Yeah, no, thank you for doing what you're doing. Yep, you're doing keep holding it down. Stuff. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Yes. <laughs> we need you out here. Yeah. <laughs> <We try. laughs> I know, I know you mentioned that there was no food. There's no food. Yeah, we were worried <laughs> about Everyone that. Everyone has mentioned that there was no food. <laughs> Hi, everyone. George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel and don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.